Today on Ham Radio q and I have a conversation with John Kruk of Yesu about the FT3DR. Is this new handheld radio worthy of the hype? Well, keep watching to find out. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Oyesu's FT3DR is probably one of the hottest transceivers that came out on the market this past year. There are plenty of breathless videos on YouTube uh, reviewing this radio, going through its features and whatnot, and giving everybody their first impressions. I thought I would do something a little bit different. So, uh, a couple months ago, I was at the Chicago FM Club's Radio Expo down in Belvedere, Illinois, and John Crook, uh, N9UPC, uh, Yesu's National Sales Director, was also there. So we had a chance to talk a little bit about the radio and how it compares to their long-running FT2, FT2DR uh, handheld transceiver. When the FT3DR came out, there was quite a price premium on it over the uh, the FT2DR, it made you um, take a bit of a pause. But now that we're later in 2019, uh, the pricing has gotten a lot closer between these two models. And now considering that we're in the you're coming close to the holiday season, uh, some coupons and specials might be involved, and you know you might. Um, be able to pick up the FT3 DR4 relatively close to that same price as the two. So that makes you question, well, you know, should I go with the uh, uh, the tried and true standard FT2 DR or should I upgrade to the three? Um, what makes the FT3 DR different than the FT2 DR? And, you know, should it be your next handheld transceiver? Well, thankfully, um, uh, John and I had this little bit of a conversation, so I'm just going to switch it over to John and let him answer that question. So, I'm with um, John Kruk here of Yesu. He's going to tell us a little bit about uh, Yesu's um, brand new FT3DR and uh, comparing it to the um, existing model, the FT2DR. That's correct. Take it away, John. So, uh, here we have both models um, in our hands. So, the FT2 uh, is, is similar in uh, accessories, first of all. That's the nice part. Your accessories are going to be compatible across there. That's a big question a lot of people have asked for us. Batteries are interchangeable. Uh, if you go ahead and have the speaker, mic, the power connections on here, uh, both are going to be the same thing. What what lies in the difference between the two is improvements of the F, on the FT3, which is almost a combination of actually the FT2 and the FT70. So one of the biggest things a lot of people use, especially like the MCOM users or for people up in the colder parts, um, you'll notice on the FT2 here, if you notice, the push to talk, the monitor buttons, everything like that is flat on the side there. On the FT3, we actually made it more ridged and more rubber and more grip um, type adding on there. So so basically, if you have a rubber glove on or a winter glove or any kind of things there, you don't actually feel with your fingertips, you can actually know, hey, where that first ridge is, is there's a push to talk, there's the monitor button that goes down to the side there. Obviously, the biggest difference in the feature between the two is I'll turn on the FT2 here and I'll turn on the FT3 is obviously the color screen. Now, the color screen is a little bit smaller than the um, FT2 screen, and that was actually done because of one of our concerns that we had for, once again, the MCOM user is his battery life. A bigger color screen, a bigger touch screen is going to go ahead and result in more battery power that's going to be used on it. So that's why we went with the smaller screen. When we start to delve into some more of the other features on there, um, this is where the FT3 really starts to shine. It does have a built-in Bluetooth chip on there. Now, a lot of people have asked, what type of Bluetooth headset works? This is an audio-only Bluetooth device in there. So that means if you have anything that you're trying to connect it to, that actually will send commands. So a good example, a lot of people want to go ahead and connect it to their car stereo. It's not going to work because your car stereo usually has the ability to send commands, such as like if it's with a phone, like change the tracks, answer phones, do commands, stuff like that. So in this case, it would not work on there. However, if you have a simple audio device, alrighty, so for an example, maybe you might have a, a Bluetooth headset that's audio. Maybe you even have a speaker in the house, a Bluetooth speaker that you can send commands on, that can pair to it on there. So that's one of the main features on there. Now one of the other actual interesting functions on here is what we call our club active monitoring function. So simply by pushing the uh, function button, you'll go ahead and you have two screens on there. I'm going to go to the cam button right now. So I'm going to push the screen there, cam. 
What I have set up here is CAM stands for Club Active Monitoring Function. And what it does is we've known there's a lot of people that say, hey, I have multiple frequencies. I might be an event where we're using a couple repeaters, couple simplexes. And I'm trying to be able to monitor. I'm trying to find out what activity is taking place. Well, you could do scanning, but the problem then with scanning is, is that if it stops on one frequency, you don't know if there's traffic on the other frequency. So as you can see on the display here, I have the frequency, my main frequency actually on there, which is a uh, simplex fusion frequency that we suggest for using worldwide so people can meet one another. Notice now there's just traffic, just happened to pop up on another frequency in that group. Watch what happens, I push that, now it instantly goes to that frequency. Now I'm using and now I'm on 5-2 simplex. If someone else was to call me on one of the other ones that I have assigned to that group, then I would see traffic or you know be able to see the graph on there and then simply by tapping it I'm able to hop through those frequencies there. So kind of a nice little function combining the band scope function as well as being able to kind of almost simultaneously monitor. Now you're not going to be able to hear it. You're only going to hear traffic which is on your displayed frequency but you still have that option. Now I'm going to go actually out of the cam function and I'm going to return back to the actual menu screen here which is kind of important on there. Because if you notice, one of the things that a lot of people said on the FT2 that it's not possible is the ability to show the alphanumeric characters of the memory while you have both frequencies up. As you can see on the top there, your active band will always go ahead and show the memory name if you have one programmed into it for the frequency. If you go ahead and change bands on there, so right now my bottom one is on APRS, notice there's nothing in the memory so there's no name showing on there. Notice how the top it disappeared, but once again, if I change bands and it's in the memory there, you can now see the actual memory name. One of the other nice functions on it is you're not actually limited until just the eight characters, which a lot of times memory names have. You can actually go up to 16 characters if you want to. But we actually have a neat function in there where if you are only using the eight characters, they will appear actually larger than a little bit smaller if you were doing all 16. And a lot of people have said that they like that for the you know eyesight, you know, kind of hard to see on there. Talking about a color screen and the daylight, we have had many reports of saying this is amazing that you can actually see it within the daylight and the sun shining directly on there. But one other important kind of key function on there is, is I'm going to go ahead and push the function button again. Notice on the bottom there it says REC. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is push REC and now you see how it says record starting. What I'm now able to do is go ahead and say add 9 UPC testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If someone was to come back to me and give me traffic while the recording is starting, it is recording my entire conversation. To simply stop, we go ahead and hit record stop, and now you see it's a stop. Now I can go back in the log, hit log, hit voice. Now I can actually go ahead and play back the message on there. So I turned up the volume a little bit there because I had it kind of low. But once again, you can go ahead and play back until you need to hear it again, whatever the case may be. Once again, another great feature that we're looking for, we're looking for to be able to go ahead and help the MCOM user to help the people, maybe you're doing a weather net or something like that, that you need to record the transmissions. Not only can you record transmit or outgoing messages, it will record receiving messages on the A band and the B band as well as analog or digital. So basically any kind of signal this can receive or give out, you're going to be able to record it. So that's just kind of some of the main features of the FT3 here that a lot of people like. Once again, every single thing that the FT2 has, this has with those additional features. All right, well thanks a lot, John. It's uh, really appreciated uh, to take us through the Yeezy's uh, uh, newest handheld, the FT3DR. You're welcome for that enlightening overview and just one comment that I need to make as many of you know I've been you know rocking the ancient um, Yesu VX8R for well over 10 years now this radio is practically bulletproof and I've traveled with it on my bicycle many times I've dropped it um, quite a few to boot even off the bike I've dropped it it's probably one of Yesu's finest analog HTs that they've ever made and you know I feel that um, in talking with John uh, about the the FT3DR that you know it that transceiver is you know is going to reach close to the same quality level as we're seeing with the VX8. Well, but will it be as rugged though as the VX8R? Yeah, time will only tell. 
Uh, but I'm very, very inclined to invest in, in one of the FT3DRs and will most likely be making that purchase in the very near future. So do you have any questions and comments about uh, Yesu's FT3DR? You know, please leave them in the comments below. I'll filter through them, um, keep the conversation going, answer them the best I can. Who knows, maybe one of those might show up in our next Your Questions Answered video. But for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. As I always say, your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. So if you like this video, give me that big thumbs up. Uh, check out some of the recommended videos that always pop up alongside here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you've watched this far, you might as well subscribe. Pressing subscribe and that little bell icon will notify you when our future videos are released. But that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.